In the field of motion graphics, we are very fortunate as three artists to have an exceptional ecosystem full of tools with tough competition going on. But if you had to put your money into a 3D software for motion, I would say you will have three options, and they are Cinema 4D, Houdini, and Blender. Well, Blender is free, so you won't have to spend any money, at least at the start. However, I can't help it but wonder, what is the best software among these, and which software is better for your needs and your projects? But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Blender market is having right now a huge sale, where you can save 25% or more on over 11,000 Blender add-ons, courses, models, you name it. And by the way, if you don't know where to start, you will find a list in the description of this video with the best add-ons in all categories. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. First, we're gonna start with Blender, and let me tell you, ever since its epic rise to glory in 2019 with version 2.8, this tool has grown dramatically to become a major player in the motion graphics scene. Thanks to its revolutionary real-time rendering capabilities with Eevee, with many users daring to call it a MoGraph paradise. However, as things go, it was only after the release of geometry nodes in 2021 and then simulation nodes in 2023 that artists started to think about it that we might be onto something that could change the balance between the 3D software and motion graphics, me included. So based on that, when it comes to creating motion graphics with Blender, we have two timelines to take into consideration. One post geometry nodes, which we'll get through a minute, but before that, let's not overlook the old school methods, because sure, they might not look that fancy, but hey, they can still do the trick. And at the heart of that, we have modifiers, a set of semi-automatic tools that can change the way an object looks and perform all sorts of effects and animations, such as animating an object based on an image or noise pattern, in addition to duplicating them in a way that we want, or maybe blending a mesh in every possible way. And the best thing about this is that it is non-destructive. In other words, these changes are not permanent, and we can adjust them however we want at any given point. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you think Blender is qualified for this job? Well, if you think about it, motion graphics can be anything and everything animated in 3D, as long as it has some stylistic elements such as abstract designs, text, or animated graphics. And since Blender is up there as one of the best all-around 3D software, it has an arsenal of tools that are ready to take on the challenge, such as modeling, character animation, texturing, and the ability to animate anything you can think about, including cameras, lighting, particles, physics, and the list goes on. Now, like I said earlier, we also have geometry nodes, the model solution for creating motion graphics inside Blender as a collective effort from the Blender Foundation to take on the major software in the field. But how does it do that exactly? Well, remember everything I just mentioned about the original methods? Well, it does all of that, in addition to many other stuff. In simpler terms, nodes are a series of rectangular looking boxes that give us the power to 3D model or animate. So in theory, anything in our scenes. For example, rotation animation, scaling, or adding a particle system. I mean everything a motion designer really desires in their project. Besides, we can connect these nodes together to form a node tree as a way for them to interact and affect each other's actions. And as a cherry on top, it is also non-destructive, which is done by adjusting the settings or numbers inside these nodes to your liking, whenever and however you like it. And what it makes it better than the traditional solutions is how we can add an infinite level of nodes and effects on top of each other as a way to create even more complex effects. And it gives us the luxury to enjoy things like math nodes, which opens up a wider and more controlled range of animations in terms of rotation, scaling, randomization, and so on. In addition, we can create animations that respond to external forces like time, object proximity, or the laws of physics with simulation nodes. However, the question now is, how does this compare to the rest of the other 3D software? Following the release of the MoGraph toolset in 2006, Cinema 4D created 
a whole new world of possibilities in procedural modeling and animation and quickly established itself as the industry standard for motion graphics and broadcast design. And while some might debate this, the software has enough to make a case for itself. In theory, Blender can do almost anything Cinema 4D does. But the biggest issue here is that it will take you longer because it is not streamlined to do this, unlike Cinema 4D, which has way too many motion graphic features for us to list and talk about in just one video. However, at the core, we have fundamentals such as cloners, dynamics, effectors, as well as the formers, which are self-explanatory in addition to fields. For the case of cloners, and just like how the name suggests, it is a way to create copies or instances of objects in various patterns and arrangements, and believe me, it can go from simple ideas to something crazy like a matrix, and then we have dynamics, which are the simulation methods for the creation of physical interactions like collisions and gravity. And then we have effectors, which are primary methods for animating your graph objects, such as moving, rotation, and scaling. For example, you can use random, which adds randomization to position, rotation, and scaling of your objects, or shader, which will affect the objects based on the textures, including animated noises, and finally we have fields, and this one does a lot of things. It can be a bit confusing, but basically, they are imaginary objects and a system of controlling, for instance, the way effectors influence cloners, such as picking an area to influence or changing the look of the effect, like making it spherical. In the world of motion graphics, very few things are a very big deal like particles. And let me tell you, when it comes to this, Cinema 4D doesn't disappoint. But you can do even better using a third-party plugin by Insidium under the name of X Particles, which is very famous if you are a Cinema 4D user. In a nutshell, it is a unified system to create particle and system effects such as cloth, smoke, fire, and fluids. And unlike particles in Blender that are limited to basic adjustments such as wind and gravity, things are different when it comes to X Particles. With a bigger set of settings, as well as particle behaviors and interactions. Besides, being also a general 3D tool, Cinema 4D is also excellent when it comes to other things such as keyframing, modeling, in addition to having an excellent render engine such as Redshift. Then we have, of course, Houdini, which is arguably the best software in VFX productions for the creation of epic visual effects. But hey, we already know that don't we? So what about motion graphics? Honestly, the short answer is that it is excellent. And for that, I think we can divide what makes Houdini great for motion graphics into three sections. The procedural workflow, particles, and simulations. So the software is fully procedural. And if you recall those geometry nodes from before, it is basically the same deal but upgraded. You know, more advanced. The best way I like to refer to Houdini is chaos. A lot of it. Because with the nodes of the software, you can generate all sorts of points, lines, or any nonsensical or complex shape. And you can animate and interconnect them in any creative way you desire. From a simple bending of a shape, to following a path or influencing them with physics. The particle system of Houdini is truly outstanding, with many ways to change the flow of particles, look, speed, and behavior on an almost infinite level. You can start by dropping a pop network node into the scene and then building on top of it. For example, changing the initial velocity to start making them fly, or by pushing them around using different forces such as gravity, wind, and turbulence, and then keep building on top of it with loads of pop operators and such things. And typically with Houdini, there are no clear-cut limitations to what can be done with it, most of the time at least. And there is no limit to how many times we can do that, which means you have a crazy level of control over the particles. And finally, you have the simulation abilities of the tool. And honestly, it is the best out there. Thanks to its powerful solvers that can produce all sorts of complex simulations, such as vellum, collision, water, smoke, and fire, in addition to other stuff, which makes Houdini an incredible motion graphics tool. In reality, all three of them are exceptional tools. However, I feel like Cinema 4D 
is the most optimal tool for motion graphics currently. For the case of Blender, it is amazing. But I think it is still new to geometry nodes, however, I'm sure it will be shining in the long term, but if Blender is all you have, then you can do incredible stuff with it, even if you don't have Cinema 4D or Houdini. Heck, you can even use it to work on incredible commercial projects for motion graphics. But the thing is, not everything is streamlined and clear-cut like Cinema 4D is. As for Houdini, it is without a surprise too good for this job, and even more advanced on a technical level compared to both Blender and Cinema 4D. However, it requires a lot of discipline and emotional investment to understand the logic and complexity of the tool, as it is extremely technical, whereas for example for Cinema 4D, things can be much more easier. And I think you could work on projects faster and more efficiently, especially if the job is not too complex. And there you have it guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.